Zoom and Jaro Drop of Doom at Six Flags Great Adventure is the world's tallest drop tower. Standing 415 feet or 126 meters tall, Zoom and Jaro is attached to the world's tallest roller coaster in King Ka. What is big or better? Find out in my review of Zoom and Jaro. Zoom and Jaro's conception owes itself to the prior two record holders as the world's tallest drop tower. In 1998, Intamin built Giant Drop at Dreamworld in Australia. This drop tower stood 390 feet, or 119 meters tall, and it was attached to Tower of Terror, which was an Intamin shuttle coaster that opened as the world's tallest roller coaster. Giant Drop would hold its record until 2012, when Six Flags Magic Mountain copied Dreamworld's idea. They had a very similar coaster to Tower of Terror and Suit Man Escape from Krypton, so Six Flags contacted Intamin, who delivered Lex Luthor Drop of Doom, a 400-foot or 120-meter tall drop tower attached to the sides of Superman. This drop tower was extremely well received, so it was no surprise that Six Flags was eyeing doing the same thing to the only coaster in the chain taller than Superman in King Ka. In 2014, Six Flags Great Adventure opened Zoom and Jaro. Attached to King Ka's support structure, Zoom and Jaro would claim the record as the world's tallest drop tower, a record that has held for the last seven years. And that record will be broken when Icon Park in Orlando opens their 430 foot or 131 meter tall drop tower later this year. However, Zoom and Jaro still is colossal. Zoom and Jaro would have several issues during its construction and operation. The ride's opening was delayed a few months due to inclement weather slowing the ride's construction. This is understandable considering the ride's height, and that was small in the grand scheme of things. The bigger issue is that the state of New Jersey prohibits both Zoom and Jaro and King Da Ka from operating simultaneously. New Jersey has a law that amusement rides that share the same structure cannot operate simultaneously. This would neuter the capacity for both Zoom and Jaro and King Da Ka, and it's still an issue to this day. The reason for this law was to protect riders from loose articles. But King Dakar and Zoom and Jaro have strict no loose article policies, and riders are required to place all their belongings in a locker prior to boarding. This includes phones, wallets, and keys. Zoom and Jaro tends to be more lax in this enforcement than King Dakar, but I would still recommend heeding the park's policy. That is especially true because if you get turned away from Zoom and Jaro station, you have a long walk ahead of you, but more on that in a bit. The frustrating thing about this shared structure rule is that rides like Shredder and TMNT Shellraiser at Nickelodeon Universe, and then Gale Force and Wild Waves at Playland's Castaway Cove can operate simultaneously. While those coasters do have separate structures, most likely because of what they observed at Six Flags Grey Adventure, I think those rides have closer near misses. Gale Force has a strict loose article policy enforced by metal detectors, but TMNT Shellraiser and Shredder rely on the honor system to prevent guests from bringing loose articles aboard. Whenever King Ka or Zoom and Jaro dispatches with riders, the other ride is locked out. The only time both rides can operate simultaneously is if one or both rides are testing, which I have seen. Zoom and Jaro is far more prone to downtime than other drop towers. Along with it being an Intamin, there are two other factors. One, it sometimes has to go down if King Ka is a mechanical issue due to its location on the ride's tower. Two, the ride is one of the most likely to be closed due to staffing because of its isolated location. Zoom and Jaro's queue line starts adjacent to King to Ka's entrance. But if you're familiar with Great Adventure, you know Ka's entrance is a ways from the tower. It makes sense for King to Ka since you're launched towards the tower, but it's a nuisance for Zoom and Jaro. You have a long walk that occupies the former location of the Rolling Thunder Wooden Roller Coaster. And there is no other attractions or food stands in this walk. The walk does at least offer some unique views of El Toro and King Da Ka, but it's among the longest queue lines of any attraction in terms of distance. In terms of the time, Zoom and Jaro usually has one of the shortest lines in the park. Along with the ride scaring the daylights out of a lot of guests, its location seems to deter a lot of guests from riding and re-riding it. The longest line I have ever seen for Zoom and Jaro was 15 to 20 minutes, and this was on a Fright Fest day when the major coasters all had one to two hour waits. Usually Zoom and Jaro is a walk-on. 
and if the ride does have a weight, you also have a single rider line that usually gets you on the next cycle. Zoomanjaro has three separate carriages. Each carriage holds eight riders, giving the ride a maximum capacity of 24 riders per cycle, which is pretty good for a drop tower. All three sides face in the same direction. You face towards the park. The ride has over-the-shoulder restraints, but they feel more like lap bars since the shoulder bars are so far to the side. These are the same restraints you find on Lex Luthor. You will not come into contact with the shoulder bars at all on this ride. The lap bar will come down quite tightly though, so it is a bit harder to feel the airtime in this drop tower compared to some of the other ones out there. Once you're secured, an alarm will sound, and the shields above you move to the side. These shields are to protect boarding guests from anything that could potentially fall off of King Ka. You then ascend the 415 foot or 126 meter tall tower. The climb starts off quite slowly until you clear the ride's magnetic brakes. But once you're level with the pullouts on King Ka, you will rapidly start rising towards the top of the tower. The full ascent takes almost a minute and at several points, you will keep asking yourself if you're already at the top. It's really jarring how tall this attraction is. Great Adventure is home to many tall coasters, and it will definitely make your palms sweat when you realize that you're twice as tall as El Toro or Nitro. This anticipation is the ride's biggest strength. Very few rides are as imposing as Zoom and Jaro Drop of Doom. Drop towers are among the most intimidating rides in the world of any size. The height, combined with the unknown of when the drop will start, make them psychological and intense thrills. So when you have one as tall as Zoom and Jaro, it will frighten even the most avid of daredevils. I've ridden Zoom and Jaro several times, but I still get those butterfly feelings in my stomach when I'm boarding this ride. Few attractions do that for me. Because of the ride's sheer height, the view of the park is spectacular. You have plenty of time to appreciate this view on the ascent and you also have a few seconds at the top while you're waiting for the drop. I believe you are able to see the skylines of both Philadelphia and New York City on a clear day, but I personally have never been able to see them. After the brief pause atop the tower, you will drop with no warning. The operator can speak to guests and tease them, but they'll never spoil the exact moment you drop. They may even give a fake countdown. Despite the towering height of Zoom and Jara, the drop isn't as strong as a lot of the other drop towers out there. You don't get any airtime, and there is only a weak, fleeting stomach dropping sensation at the start of the drop. It's surprising this drop isn't any stronger considering the stats. Where the drop does excel though is in the speed department. The drop lasts forever and reaches a maximum speed of 90 miles per hour or 140 kilometers per hour. That is insane for any ride, let alone a drop tower. The carriage will start to shimmy towards the bottom of the drop due to all this speed. This isn't rough or anything, and I think it actually adds to the wild nature of the ride. It feels untamed. It doesn't feel like you're going to stop between all that speed and the drop length. The drop length really messes with you if you're used to the shorter drop towers on other rides. The brakes then hit the vehicle quite hard, and you experience 3.5 Gs while decelerating. The stop is fairly sharp and intense, more so than other drop towers because of how fast you are falling. You then slowly lower back down to the station, the shields fold back out over your head, and you may even hear King Ka shoot off overhead. So what would I rate Zoom and Jaro Drop of Doom? I would give this drop tower a 7.5 out of 10. This is a unique drop tower. The most notable thing about this ride is the colossal height. The anticipation is the ride's biggest strength, and the views are great as well. The drop itself is different than other drop towers, while it may not have the airtime or force I would expect, the sense of speed and drop length makes it stand out. It just barely made my list for my top 25 favorite drop towers. So those are my thoughts on Zoom and Jaro Drop of Doom, the world's tallest drop tower at Six Flags Great Adventure. What are your thoughts on Zoom and Jaro? Are you a fan of this thrill ride? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.